Sitting at your desk, you receive an email from the respond analyst notifying you of an incident that has been assigned to you. You immediately click the notification to see what's happening. Clicking the link in the email, you are taken directly to the incident. You see the three telemetries involved in the incident and that a recommendation for incident response was made by the respond analyst. The respond analyst tells you why this incident is a severity three at this point in time. In addition to the attack stage and the number of internal assets involved, the analyst has also detected one or more high value assets as part of the incident. The respond analyst uses both local context and inferred reasoning based on vulnerability scan data to determine the classification of assets. The respond analyst has also determined the likelihood of this incident being malicious and actionable is very high. This determination was made by models built and maintained by the respond analyst, not playbooks or scripts which take significant resources to write and maintain. The reasons for escalation are based on integrated reasoning across multiple sources and perspectives, including the telemetry data, company context and patterns to corroborate and confirm the conclusions drawn by the respond analyst. Furthermore, you see the incident is still open and you know that other related events which might occur in the future will automatically be scoped into this incident until you decide to close it. Next, you turn your attention to the visual reconstruction of the incident. At the bottom, you see that the respond analyst has made a decision to escalate based on seven related endpoint events as well as a timeline of when it unfolded. You then mouse over the Miller asset and see that six of seven events were involved with this workstation, but it is a low priority as seen in the console. Clicking on the file hash, you see this is the linchpin of the incident the respond analyst depicts, and you learn it is a remote access Trojan hiding with two different file names. Next, you click on network to see the network intrusion security events related to this incident. The two workstations, the source of the bad file hash are showing up at the top of the graph. Here is the Thompson workstation, and here is the Miller workstation. Below that are three other workstations that are involved in this incident for a total of five assets involved. The respond analyst observes similar behavior on all these machines, such as the malware itself, related IPS signatures, and the destinations. One thing that is troubling you is that the Holmes workstation is a critical asset. A deeper look at the traffic coming from the Holmes workstation and the other workstations revealed that this is a Zeus Gen command and control signature. There are two variants of this signature as the respond analyst is showing. Wanting to understand more about the signatures, you look at the left side of the respond analyst and note several details about the signature, including its importance, the category, the vendor that sent the event, the signature ID, and the sensor ID. You can tell by the graph that the malware is communicating with six external destinations on port 80, a common web port. There are 69 network events which have been scoped into this incident in addition to the seven endpoint events. The respond analyst can scope thousands of security events for a single incident. Before the respond analyst, you recall that incidents were built on a handful of events and required manual scoping. Now, with multiple events correlated and scoped into the incident, you are saving countless hours of work. Switching to the web filter events, you notice the traffic from the same five workstations is permitted, but they are communicating with an uncategorized domain. Clicking on the uncategorized domain, you learn that the domain was recently registered, which also raises a suspicion of the respond analyst as it knows that new domains can sometimes be used for malicious traffic such as command and control. This is an additional piece of evidence that the respond analyst uses to identify malicious activity. The timeline shows a total of 38 events from your web filter that solidify this case as an incident that needs action. That makes a total of 114 events from endpoint, network, and web telemetries which have been scoped into this incident. The respond analyst has significantly sped up the containment and remediation process as you have drastically reduced the time to investigate, scope, and triage an incident. Integrating the respond analyst with your SOAR platform has also significantly reduced your attack dwell time from around 78 days in line with the industry average, and now incidents can be remediated in near real time.
After this incident has been remediated, it's time to close it out. Clicking on close this incident, you see a pop-up window that asks you if you want to close this incident and stop updating it. By clicking yes for the incident, the respond analyst learns that this was an actionable incident and you wanna see more of these in the future. However, if you say no, this is not an actionable incident, you will have options to provide feedback to the respond analyst, which it will learn from, and apply to similar events that occur in the future. That's it. Your incident is closed and you know if another incident crops up and requires your attention, the respond analyst will notify you immediately. You think about how the respond analyst has saved you hours of research and investigation, and now you can get back to doing all of the other important things on your plate instead of staring at a console and waiting for another alert.